Okay, today I want to talk about a new service that we offer on the droptinestore.com. You know, everybody talks about the soil sample being the first step to high quality food plots and, and that's exactly right. Uh, we were noticing though a missing link with our clients in that a lot of them were going to the local agricultural extension or buying their, their products from a local university and running the soil samples through that. The way that we're doing it now is really good because all of these soil samples, you jump on the store, you buy your sample, you'll get a bag specific with the drop tine account on it that goes right to the lab and then the sample results come directly back to us. And this allows us a lot of control in knowing exactly what you're dealing with. It allows us to customize the seed blend to exactly what you need. So when we see your results, if you're looking for a particular fall food plot blend, we know exactly what you're dealing with. At that point, we may recommend a different product and we can also help you with your fertility program and let you know exactly how much lime you need and where sort of the missing links are in providing high quality forage for your deer. So again, you just jump on the store, you can buy the bags. Uh, the, the very next day or that day, a form and a bag will go out for each soil sample that you purchase. So we're going to head out to the field today real quick just to show you once these come, a lot of clients are calling and asking us what exactly do I do with it. So we'll go ahead and go out in the field and uh, show you actually in a field that we call a rock garden that is just outside the office here. So We say it a million times, but make sure you have a clean bucket. This one here is labeled Drop Tine Wildlife Soil Only. All it has in there is a little bit of soil. Personally, I prefer a spade. A lot of folks use the soil probe, which is really nice and clean for pulling out soil plugs. Um, but I personally prefer uh, the flexibility of having the, the spade. I have eight inches marked off here. We certainly don't need to go eight inches. In fact, We'll only go about five inches, um, but I like to be able to look at the soil horizon and just really play around with the spade. Plus, I find the spade to be easier just to work with. So, whatever your preference is, either the soil probe or the spade, but again, nice clean bucket. Okay, now real quick here, the history of this particular field, uh, you can tell one of the neat things about being able to work on one of the farms that we manage and that we hunt on is being so close to one of the fields. This particular plot we call a rock garden and if you can see you'll know exactly why. It's just loaded with rocks. It's on a hillside here. Um, the office is right behind us but you know we're looking at probably six or seven acres here and the goal this year, you can see last year we had corn the goal this year is really to turn it into a soybean, which is a warm season annual, along with a perennial option so we don't have to come in here every year and clean the table. So the perennial option down here in the lower part of the field is going to be alfalfa. And of course the soybeans will be working well with the rotation on the corn. So again, the, the soil samples, you know, a lot of people tend to get uh, real intimidated by that terminology. We're going to let the folks in the lab worry about all the science and all the technical stuff. Out here in the field, it's real simple. We've got the clean bucket, the soil bag, and the sheet, which we probably won't use in the field. Now I'm going to go about five inches. Most places it does not work like that, but I got lucky. Now again, it's a pretty big field, so I'm going to go around and do probably six different locations just like this. I'll take a subsample. It's a little wet here. We had a lot of rain, a lot of snow. I'll have to pull that subsample out, package it up, and get it off to the lab. And within 48 hours, our email will come back with all the recommendations, and that'll give us a direction on where we need to go from here. So let's go get a few more samples, and uh, we'll move on to the next one.
Here's those rocks we talked about right there. It's my intention, the wind is always right here during hunting season. This was a, a hay field before it was a cornfield this year that we really didn't touch. We just kind of left it alone. So my thoughts are we've got plenty of trees, older trees back here along the edge. If we push both of these plots, the, the alfalfa and the soybeans right to the edge, I think we'll have some really good ambush points along that edge. So that's kind of the intention, you know, from soil sample to buck on the ground this year. That's our goal with this particular plot. We did it last year and we're going to pick on this one this year. So let's get started. Okay, so we're on our fourth or fifth sample here, and I'll make a quick note. I was actually out here this morning on the tractor, uh, finishing up mowing some of this down. We take our standing corn and we mow it down uh, slowly and provide uh, some corn that's cut, make it easier on the deer uh, throughout the winter time. You can see we've got some here that we haven't cut yet, but you know we've got five or six acres here and it's all completely gone. So within the next day or two, Everything else will be mowed down and uh, we're ready to get in here. We'll lime, fertilize, and we'll get the chisel plow in here and incorporate all this organic matter back into the soils, which will provide uh, plenty of nutrients and uh, soil moisture holding capacity for the future crop. So a couple more samples and we're ready to go. All right, I'm just gonna take all those samples and prepare a subsample by just mixing. Fall it up real good. If there's any big rocks getting in the way, I'll just take them and throw them out. Okay, so I like to do this in the field. You know, for all the soil samples we take, the last thing I want to do is get this back, forget about where I took it. So. We've probably got eight, 10, maybe even a dozen more to do. So bring a pen with me. You can see the neat thing about this is the drop time customer ID number is already on there. So you fill out the name of the field and your name. This is drop time farms. And the field name is gonna be RG. That stands for rock garden. My soil journal has a code in there that, so I know what that means. So we'll go ahead and fill this bag up to the fill line mark. Make sure my bucket's clean for the next one. And we're good to go. Now the one last step, we need to make sure that this bag corresponds to this data sheet. So I also bring these, it's kind of messy and, a, and it's a pain in the field, but again, the reason I bring these is so I can do this right now, make sure uh, the field name corresponds to the field name on the bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that out and we are done.
Okay, the rest of this I'm gonna fill out back at the desk. Um, the crop to be grown is extremely important if you wanna be able to work with us on how to get your fertility program right and how to amend those soils. So if you're planning on planting corn or maybe even a perennial uh, from one of the products on the website, make sure you fill that in and feel free to put as many notes in there as possible so the lab knows exactly what you're doing. The more information they have about what your intentions are with this particular plot, the more they can help you and the more we can help you. So pretty simple. Uh, we'll go ahead and mail these to the lab and we'll show you the results once we get them back.